Welcome to Cardano Chats, where we chat with various people and projects being built on the Cardano blockchain. This is brought to you by Grow Your Stake, our mission-driven stake pool, where we contribute 100% of our profits to Drop for Drop Charity, who builds clean water wells for communities in Africa. We're very excited about that, and thanks to all of our delegators for their support. I want you to know, though, that your rewards do not they're not any less. In fact, they're better because that you get to contribute to communities in need on our dime, not yours. Today, we have a very special guest. His name's Ryan. He's with Digital Quant. He's building Cardax, one of the first decentralized exchanges on Cardano blockchain, very similar to Uniswap. We're super pumped to have him. It's very needed. And here we go. Ryan from Cardax. Uh, a very interesting new project, a decentralized exchange. So Ryan, welcome. Hi, Joseph. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to have you on the show. Um, man, tell us a little bit about you. Where are you in the world, first of all? I'm in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that explains a little bit of the time difference and, uh, you know, uh, a, a slightly yeah. different accent. I like your accent, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, we just sound normal and bland in America to me. But hey, anyway, um, it's great to have you on, man. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in uh, crypto and the blockchain space. Sure. Um, so I think it goes back to uh, 2017 when, when I really got uh, involved. Um, the first time I knew about uh, crypto uh, was somewhere around 2015 and I went to a few meetups uh, to talk about uh, Bitcoin. Um, but I was not really uh, hooked uh, on uh, somehow. I thought uh, it would just remain a, a niche thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, uh, and then back in uh, then forward in, in, in 2017, we're talking about uh, somewhere September, October in, uh, in 2017. Then uh, we were in the beginning of this uh, big bull run of uh, B, uh, now not only Bitcoin, but also the, the whole crypto market. Yep. And then uh, then I thought, well, okay, what else is uh, here apart from uh, Bitcoin? And then I also learned more about uh, Ethereum. I thought it was pretty cool. The fact that you could actually uh, built on top of uh, of the, uh, that technology the, the, of the underlying technology the, the blockchain um and i thought who else is doing something kind of similar um but with a with a different approach and that's how i found um cardano there were other projects as well neo i remember eos as well uh well there were many uh that they're not yeah. longer around but um what really um caught my attention, uh, I remember, was uh, the whiteboard I came across on YouTube uh, to the, the whiteboard uh, video that uh, Charles Hoskinson made. And then I was uh, yeah, totally inspired by, by not only by the, uh, yeah, by the, the project, but also with the, the vision on what, the, what he was looking at. Yeah, at yeah, for. it's as one of the best videos. I mean, for anybody that hasn't seen that video, that's watching this now, we will put a link to that below. Uh, and we also did include that in our previous interview with Charles Hoskinson. But yeah, that video uh, is, you know, I wish I'd seen it in 2017. Without a doubt, it's uh, a very powerful example of the leadership, the vision, the strategy that Charles Hoskinson has brought into this project, as well as all the significant problems that he solved that he saw in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah. we truly are a third generation uh, cryptocurrency, like he says. Um, well, that's very cool, man, how you got involved. It's similar similar for me. I got in in 2017 as well, uh, late 2016, really. Found out about Cardano, I think, when it was, uh, I think I saw it, read a little bit about it on the website, and it was around two cents or somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I got to get some of that. But, I, it, you know, the exchange issue at that point, I, you know, I was like only on Coinbase or whatever. Um, so I wasn't able to get it. And then like two weeks later, you know, skyrocketed. And uh, yeah. yeah, so but yeah, cra crazy. So anyway, fast forward, uh, you know, we're we're now uh, we've gone through a long bear market. We're in 2021. Yeah. Um, what inspired Cardax? Um, I think it, it all started with, uh, um, first with, um, 
the hard fork, the Mary hard fork. Um, so as you mentioned, there was a long time, uh, a bear market in which the guys in, uh, were just working in, in Cardano, the, in, in IH, HK. Right. Um, and then, um, but then a, an actual product for, for us as a community, it was the first time that we could see something, um, well, er, a bit earlier was for the uh, stake pool operators. Um, but then for the, for the rest of the community was uh, the fact that you could now um, create your own uh, tokens, the Cardano native tokens. Um, right. That was in, in March with uh, 2021 with uh, with uh, Hard Fork, with the Mary Hard Fork. So that, that's what uh, um, I got uh, interested in, on, on that, on how to build your uh, tokens. And I thought, well, then um, like it happened also in Ethereum, then uh, a lot of tokens were created, but then also you need a place where you can also trade them. So where you can get liquidity. Right. Um, and of course, a lot of uh, the projects uh, or a lot of the, the tokens that are created uh, won't be massive, but some of them will be, become big uh, projects um, that will have a utility token that will be a Cardano native token. So I thought for, for those, um, uh, that there's got to be some place where you can uh, start trading. And there was no right. place or no idea at the moment uh, uh, to start something like that. So then I just asked in the forum of uh, the Cardano forum. Um, I got some good feedback and then they encouraged me to put the, that as a, they said that you should put it uh, as a proposal in Catalyst. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, what is Catalyst? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I started learning about that. And, and when then, was uh, this? When, when was, was this? Uh, uh, March. Uh, March. 20, uh, I think m maybe last days of February. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. So you found out about Catalyst that like, okay, so this is very early. Okay. I, di I didn't realize you'd found out about Catalyst at that point. That's great. And so you popped into fund four right away, I guess. Yeah. The time that when I, when I actually put the, the proposal fund three was already closed. Uh, on, okay. um, so I went through, I, I put it on fund four. Um, yeah, and started getting a lot of uh, also feedback from the community, um, which is great because I, we could made a lot of modifications as well to the proposal, which uh, helped us a lot to right. have a, a stronger roadmap as well. Um, and part of that, that feedback was also people that said, uh, I would like to participate in the, in the project. Uh, I would like to put some um, time and learn how to build uh, smart contracts on, uh, on Plutus. Uh, so I would like to actually do it. Uh, and what best than doing in, in an actual project. So uh, that's how we started also building the team uh, from the initial proposal on, on Catalyst. Yeah, that's that's a, a crazy testament to the power of this uh, decentralized incubator accelerator that Cardano has. It's it's pretty pretty amazing how that's that's starting to unfold. So that yeah. Catalyst uh, for anybody that's watching. It's basically a place where you can go and uh, propose your ideas to get funding from the internal mechanism on the Cardano blockchain that builds a treasury. Uh, and so it's, I think, now at maybe 250 to 500 million that's in this treasury for funding projects that the community of Cardano votes on. So incredibly powerful, uh, you know, accelerator system. It's like a Y Combinator on steroids, really. Uh, yeah. And so you you have not only, so you, you haven't established if you're going to receive funding just yet. Is that correct? No, not yet. It, We're waiting okay, you for don't have the, the results. voting. Right, yeah. right. But what has happened is your idea has uh, received some attention and you've built a team. So tell us a little bit about the team that you've built and, um, you know, is, is this, uh, are you feeling good about the team? What are the roles? Yeah. yeah, what's happening there? Yeah, so we have a um, yeah. As I mentioned, it all started from from the initial proposal, and then we have um, a couple of uh, developers in the in the team that are looking into first the the uh, architecture and having a, a proper uh, architecture for the project. And at the same time, we also wanted to um, work on the uh, on the UI to give uh, um, the people the, an idea of how it would look like uh, even before it's, it's built. So then uh, for that also, somebody join us to who is a, a, a UX designer. Uh, and we have released in, in, in our Twitter account a few of the initial uh, uh, designs that we have also for the, for the decks. Um, um, but also uh, we have more people in the team that are more helping on their marketing side of things. 
um, and also uh, helping with uh, managing the community, which is, is growing uh, every day. Uh, yeah. Which is oh, that's also something else. Also, that uh, we're seeing now, now lately. Also, a lot of in social media and on our Discord is growing also uh, massively. The last time, the last couple of weeks. Oh, fantastic, man! So, what stage are you guys at? Uh, when do you anticipate a launch? Uh, so, for the launch, we are kind of uh, well, we have to wait for the Alonso uh, right. hard fork first. Uh, so, what Cardano has said is um, they have put a, uh, I think, a deadline. Uh, I think it's somewhere in, in August, beginning of August, for what they've said. Uh, it used to be July, but now has been postponed uh, slightly. Um, so, yeah, we want to have everything ready um, so we can start right away, probably just... Uh, so you're uh, coding on the test net then? You'll be yeah. developing on the test net? Okay. Yeah, we'll be developing. So that during this summer, then uh, we want to um, have already the all the, the smart contracts uh, that also do the audits. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also want to do an external audit. So then uh, you can always make mistakes and then we don't want to um, uh, have any user pay for uh, mistakes in the, in the code. Yeah. So then, um, then we will be doing also external um, uh, audits. Okay, very, very cool. Um, I know that this is something that uh, I didn't have listed, but are you, is there going to be a token that you guys are going to have, uh, you know, for the users that are interested in getting involved with you guys? Are you doing an IDO or what's going to happen there? Yeah, we're going to have a, um, our own token, a CDX token. Uh, it's going to okay. be a utility token that uh, it's going to allow um, people that create um, uh, uh, a liquidity pool uh, mm-hmm. to be paid in in the the native token in, in CDX. Okay. Um, and then maybe I should also talk a little bit about um, that later um, on how it works on the, how it will work and uh, for the, the, the decks. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, maybe before we go there, let's, let's just discuss, can you tell us a little bit more about the exchanges and the different types of exchanges and why you guys chose to go with an AMM? Yeah, sure. So what we did is uh, then uh, we looked at the whole uh, landscape uh, in uh, different exchanges, and then we looked at also the centralized and decentralized uh, exchanges because we wanted to understand uh, how do they they work from a, a pricing uh, perspective. How do they get to uh, a, a price? Um, and then we basically noticed that uh, uh, they use two different uh, systems. One is is their order book. And the other one mm-hmm. is the uh, AMM or Automated Market Maker. Uh, the order book is the, what a lot of uh, the big uh, centralized exchanges like Binance or Bitrix or even Coinbase also uses. Right. Uh, um, and that's uh, it's greater for when you have pairs that have a, a lot of liquidity, like BTC to ETH, for example, or ADA to USDT. Um, uh, but when you you go to other pairs or that are like very illiquid, uh, which is likely to happen in projects uh, that uh, will start also in Cardano, because you don't start big, uh, then when you create a, a liquidity pool, it's likely to be uh, mid-sized to smaller uh, at the beginning at least. If and then for those, um, it's um, not that the order book doesn't work that that great. What happens uh, in Today, for example, then there are some decentralized exchanges using the that order book. Um, IDEX is one. So if you have traded once uh, in, in the, uh, on Ethereum, uh, it's mainly for ERC20 tokens. Um, they use that. There's another one called uh, Switch here uh, as well that work more on the uh, for other types of uh, of projects um, that had a great UX. So you you would get uh, a great uh, experience, but the, from uh, only from a uh, user interface uh, point of view, because the moment that you wanted to start trading on those uh, pairs that don't have a lot of liquidity, what happens is that uh, um, you put an order and to buy or, or sell any of the tokens, uh, and then you have to wait for hours, sometimes days. Um, so in short, uh, the order book has... Uh, uh, the good part of that is for great for for 
that pairs with a lot of liquidity and it's not that great for low so liquidity. So basically like a, with, a, with an order book like that, you've got to have a uh, critical mass, uh, a critical amount of, of liquidity uh, in coin. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That makes sense. And so then on the AMM side? Yeah, on the AMM side, uh, for your uh, viewers and, and listeners uh, to uh, to understand this, um, you're probably familiar with the uh, Uniswap. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's uh, the uh, automated market maker where um, it means that anybody can create a, a liquidity pool. So you can create uh, um, the pairs that we were just talking. So for example, you create your uh, your token uh, and you put the Bob token um, uh, to, uh, let's say, ADA. Uh, that would be in the case of uh, Cardex because it would be for the Cardano ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, the the way it works is fundamentally different than the the, the order book in the order book um, uh, or in the AMM. You create, as I said, uh, your uh, liquidity pool, and that uh, that's where DeFi also gets into um, place because um, then liquidity pool uh, providers um, then they get a pay a fee uh, yeah. out of because as a reward for providing liquidity, um, and and. That order uh, book, uh, it's um, much better suited for for projects uh, like um, uh, the ones that will start on on Cardano, which, uh, like I mentioned before, will be likely more mid-sized to smaller projects, at least at the beginning. Sure, sure. So, how do you think this will be? Uh, well, you mentioned Uniswap. How will this be better than Uniswap being built on Cardano and, you know, features-wise, etc. Yeah, the way we're trying to do it better is uh, on the well, on the one hand, we'll like you mentioned, we'll benefit of, of all the work that uh, Cardano ha has done, um, and uh, the um, the different way that Cardano works compared to uh, to Ethereum. So we will already fee benefit from fee structure fee. already. Yeah, you yeah. won't have to pay these uh, huge uh, gas uh, prices, uh, um, but that's on, on a Cardano side. Um, so other things that we're planning to to do is in in a normal in Uniswap, for example, or, or other uh, AMM. The problem that you have is that uh, usually when you create a um, a pool, uh, you have to create uh, fifty fifty. So then you have to create uh, fifty percent of your token and fifty percent of Ethereum in case of uh, of uh, um, Uniswap or any other uh, pair. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, once you start, it's usually difficult to create a pool that is uh, big enough. So there's a lot of slippage or there's a lot of um, also um, fluctuations in the in the price because you end up creating a pool that is not big enough. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of liquidity. Right. So there's a lot of fluctuations in the in the price. One way that uh, we wanted to, to tackle that is, uh, that is a, a, a way um, there are two ways that you can tackle that. The problem is giving the so you can start a pool uh, with your own token and mm -hmm. without having to have a, the same amount of uh, ADA. You could also um, give the the price to the taker. So the one that buys the, the token will say like this is the the amount I'm willing to to pay for your token. The other way is that also you give that uh, to that information. You pull it from uh, an oracle. That will give you the the more um, a, a good estimation of what the price should be. Um, yeah, Are you guys and, and looking at tying into Charlie Three, or have you, have you seen those guys yet? No, 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 Char we haven't seen them. Charlie Three. Well, it's fairly, it's incredibly new, right? So they haven't even launched, but that was one of the new IDOs on uh, Card Starter recently. I think they were in. Um, Catalyst, but they're going to be an oracle. They're calling themselves like the chain link of Cardano. Um, oh, really so, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I oh. mean, assuming that worked out then and you guys had a relationship, is that something you guys might tie into or just curious? Yeah. No, definitely. Okay. Yeah. The, the, um, I didn't know about them, but I yeah, definitely will um, look more into, into that and, and to get in touch with them. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to say there? I know I chimed in. Uh, I don't know if you finished your thoughts. So, yeah, and, um, and perhaps also it's interesting to um, to talk a bit about uh, the, how it's going to work for liquidity providers in in Cardex. So, in, in Cardex, uh, you will be able to create your uh, own 
pool or your pair or your, your market uh, and uh, you'll be uh, able to receive rewards for uh, adding liquidity to um, that market. Now those rewards will be paid um, in uh, the utility token of uh, Cardex, which is a CDX. Um, and that's a, a question that we've got a lot through the community, if we have a, our own token. And yeah. um, so the, the answer is yes, it, it will be that, uh, the CDX token. And then uh, the utility for that would be uh, um, to begin with, it will be to the, do the payout to all the, the liquidity providers of different pairs. Um, so yeah, that. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, that brings me to funding. So, uh, how are you guys going to sustain, uh, launch, build the team? Uh, what are you doing for funding? Yeah, for funding. So we have, uh, two different, um, routes that we're going. So one for the really, um, uh, beginnings, uh, we, um, applying on to, um, project catalysts, um, and uh, also, apart from that, also we will be doing a, a small um, a private sale, um, but um, and, and that would be mainly, as you said, to to finance the the team uh, yeah. and the the first uh, months as well, and also the the development of uh, of the product itself, so we can actually start with a um, with a working product once uh, the Alonso hard fork happens, yeah. um, and not just. For also the other way that uh, the, the other reason why we're going for that is because we want to also uh, um, get some uh, funds to allocate that to create some pools. So when you when we do go live, uh, then you will go to Cardex and then there will be already some existing pools um, that where you can already start trading. Uh, we want to avoid the that uh, you would go there and you would see only one pool or. Uh, that that doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of liquidity. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so uh, in terms of challenges, uh, you know, you guys are um, uh, about to, you know, you're you're getting up to speed. Uh, what are your challenges right now, and uh, what's like in terms of the funding for the private sale? Actually, I have I have two questions going in my head right now. So yeah. in terms of challenges. Um, what are the main challenges you guys are trying to overcome right now? And what do you see the main challenges being in the future? I think one of the, the, the main, main challenge uh, of this moment is to, um, to provide a, a platform that is on the one hand uh, on time and then gives the ability to uh, everybody that has created uh, a Cardano native token to, to start uh, trading smoothly uh, once mm -hmm. uh, we launched. Um, so for that I would say is the main, the fundamental challenge that we have. Rather than having a lot of uh, different things, uh, there are other projects also uh, that um, have decided to go for um, a lot of different things at the same time. Uh, right. in, in our approach, is more to start with this fundamental problem, which is uh, uh, get a place uh, where or a platform where you could trade your uh, Cardano native tokens, and it, it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. And then to build on top of that afterwards to make it really simple and and that it it works well, yeah. Um, and that's, that's a crucial. Good, that's, that's a huge. Yeah. I mean, that's a wise approach, right? Stay, uh, to pick one thing and do it incredibly well. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Like uh, to to launch first with something that uh, so then the, the users. Uh, like it and 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 like it because not they like us as a team, but because it works for them. Uh, it yeah. does what it's supposed uh, to do. Um, and also speaking of uh, also of uh, challenges and 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 the community as well, um, we will also um, and that's also a big uh, challenge. So we want what we want to do is uh, to give the community the the option to be part of the of the future roadmap of uh, of Cardex. And what do I mean exactly by that is that um, we want to um, allocate part of the uh, of the fees that uh, we will get in there for for training mm -hmm. um, and to so maybe it's a bit too too specific, but uh, for every um, transaction, uh, then it, it would be a, a zero point um, zero point three percent, zero point thirty five to be exact, um, and then the zero point three will go to the liquidity providers that we were talking about, uh, and in in the way of the CDX uh, token to yeah, pay out great. for them, 
and the remaining um, 0.05%, uh, it will go to the uh, to the Cardax uh, DAO treasury. And what does that mean is that uh, we we want to um, allocate those uh, resources for this uh, DAO that will be uh, community driven. Uh, as the name says. Uh, um, yeah, that's great. Are you going to be using the features that Cardano provides for governance? Yeah, yeah, we want to do that, uh, and uh, also we want to um, learn a lot for what uh, uh, IOG is doing with the uh, with Project Catalyst. Uh, right. That's uh, it's it gives us already a lot of uh, inspiration, and, and uh, also we want to keep the the relationship very close with them to understand also what the challenges are of uh, because that's a completely apart uh, project in, in itself uh, to manage a, a well-functioning uh, DAO. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's also something that I think we, we also owe the, to our community the, that they have something to say in the future of the, the project. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's the power of uh, having a decentralized exchange, right? This community involvement and and that's also a testament to the fact that you chose to do this on Cardano, obviously, because you're going to have that inherent functionality and yeah. uh, somewhat of a model to learn from, which is great. It's good that you're participating in Catalyst and, and seeing that. Uh, they, I, For what they're trying to accomplish this year, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, they've got to be running into a ton of problems, but they're doing a great job. Yeah, um, They're already on, what is it, Fund 6 or... You know, it's they're they're just accelerating rapidly, and each fund gets bigger as it goes. It's it's yeah. pretty amazing. So yeah, hopefully that's uh, teaching you guys a lot. That's that's pretty exciting. Uh, one of the other things I was going to ask you is about the private sale. So you you mentioned doing mm -hmm. a private sale. What around when is the date for that? Because I know a lot of our users like or, you know they like to watch and invest and learn about new projects, etc. So uh, how how is that going to work, and how could somebody find out more about that? Yeah, we, we don't have the, still the, the the details. We haven't released them. Uh, that's going to be on the, around the 11th of May. Okay. Um, the way that, um, that people can know more about it is um, just join our Discord uh, channel. We'll announce it there first because um, we want to give the, our community first uh, the, the option. Um, how can you join? The, you can just go to our website to uh, cardax.io. That's a C A R D A X dot I O, Cardex. Um, and then from there, uh, you will put a big green button at the at the top that says uh, "Join our Discord, our Discord uh, server." And from there, we'll uh, we'll communicate and the uh, around the the eleventh and on on that week uh, about the specifics. Okay, great. Yeah, that's good. Well, definitely, we want to support what you guys are doing. So we will certainly include links for how people can follow you guys uh, in the description of the video here. Uh, that way people can stay in touch. But is there anything that uh, anywhere else you want to tell people to go to find out more about what you're doing and, and stay up to date? Do you have a Discord channel or, um, you know, just how's the community staying involved? Yeah, um, we have a... Uh... The, the main way is uh, through our um, website, cardax.io, okay. uh, that you can find information there. And then from there, you can also find the links. Uh, we're active on, on Twitter uh, as okay. well. If you look for Cardax Dex, uh, you'll find us there. And um, and the main um, channel of communication that we have with the community is uh, our Discord server. Um, okay. And you, if you go to our website, uh, you can, uh, or just uh, send us a, a tweet uh, asking if you cannot find the information, um, and then we'll um, we'll uh, direct you to the the right place. Okay, very cool. So exciting, exciting path ahead for you guys. Um, yeah, you uh, have a ton of work and a tight timeline because you're trying to launch pretty soon, along other projects that are doing similar stuff. And uh, you've also you don't have a working Cardano. Uh, smart contracts platform yet um but uh you're it so you guys are going to be developing on the test net yeah and then launches sometime late summer where do you see this headed in the next two to five years like where what's your roadmap looking like what's your vision the the vision is a uh, first in the, in the roadmap to first to in during this summer deliver um, everything like I mentioned uh, that everything that works like it's supposed to work in testnet 
then uh, on mainnet we're thinking of uh, uh well after the the um, alonso's hard fork so we're thinking somewhere in uh, august according to what cardano has uh, said um and for the longer term is um yeah we just want to grow with the community and what that means is uh, uh we want to um we don't want to say what the roadmap exactly is going to be from our side uh, without in involving the the community, if if that means, for example, that uh, if the community um, votes for um, and this is voting exactly like happens uh, nowadays in uh, in Project Catalyst, but within the the Cardex ecosystem, uh, if the community votes for um, a project that says uh, we should uh, have a kind of a uh, launchpad for new projects um, and yeah then, then that's the thing we have to start working then towards or if they say um, um, for something completely different within the the scope as well of uh, of uh, cardex then yeah we would have to move also to that uh, that direction but mainly would be like keeping the 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 decks as the uh, the the most important part and from there building also with with the the community yeah. yeah and yeah and that could go in very different uh, ways but always like uh, with uh, uh with the uh, within the the cardano ecosystem of course and and trying to grow the the cardex ecosystem uh, as well yeah okay very good um i love the idea of community involvement and and that you're pulling that in to to play a part in the vision uh that i think that speaks volumes for the wisdom of taking that approach. So that's exciting. Uh, I mean, I, it's kind of something you have to do when you claim yourself to be de decentralized uh, exchange. But uh, I mean, you've got to kickstart it, right? So the project has to get a direction in the beginning. And um, it's good to know that you have the community in mind for moving forward. What's the community situation looking like right now? Like, do you have a lot of people? Do you have a lot of interest? And in, how's that going? <laughs> Yeah, lately has been growing uh, a lot of. Uh, got a lot of uh, questions from the community, and yeah, it's growing uh, every every day. Um, particularly the the um, on on Twitter and and from there also from on on Discord, and also then the questions are every time more uh, more in detail. And um, uh, it's also what's interesting to see is that uh, sometimes uh, we don't even have to uh, ans answer some questions that then other members of the community already give the answers, which is uh, pretty cool to see as well. Yeah, absolutely. That becomes kind of a a, a team almost for you in a sense, which is yeah, great. exactly. Then and, and yeah, it's a great uh, thing to see because it's also. Um, it's by design uh, that we want to do this uh, with uh, the community, and it's not just something that we're just saying, um, mm -hmm. but it's also in in in, in our best interest uh, to keep everybody uh, really uh, aligned with the, the vision and keep on also uh, giving us uh, feedback. Yeah, absolutely. That kind of transparency that you guys already have coming out of the gates is creating community intelligence, which is going to be an invaluable asset for decentralized exchange, but also for just continuing to educate the community on its own, uh, yeah. which is kind of yeah. fascinating in itself. Uh, very cool. Uh, there was one question I forgot to ask, and that is that the uh, Uniswap, for example, when they have a listing or an IDO or certain periods where it's incredibly busy, uh, there's the network congestion issue um, where you're unable to get a transaction to go through. Uh, do you, do you see you guys having that sort of issue on Cardano or do you have a solution for that or how's, how's that going to work? Um, yeah, we have some uh, things already in the, in the, um, in the, in the roadmap. Um, and a lot of that is going to be also figured out in the part of the, in the, in the Q and A that we will be doing during the, uh, the late part of the summer or the whole summer actually. Um, um, but yeah, in short, uh, yeah, we we want to um, be prepared for that for that uh, scenario, prepared for success. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it is a big issue, and I, I know a lot of people have had failed transactions, etc. And there's just a lot that happens there when everyone's trying to jump on at the same time. I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that the scalability of Cardano assists with that somewhat. Um, is that not yeah. the case? Yeah, for what we have seen uh, so far, yeah, th that is the case. And um, then also, 
on on the part of the the speed, but also on on the side of the um, the annoying part of having to pay a lot of uh, in in fees in in, in gas that right. also won't happen um, by not by our design, but by uh, Cardano's uh, design. Um, and apart from that, um, yeah, I think that we always uh, we will encounter um, problems, um, but then the things. By design, also we we want to be there always to try to fix them as soon as possible. So we're part of the team. We will be focused in uh, in um, uh, on the users and and try to get the tickets uh, the done as soon as possible. So then our team is not that uh, big. So then uh, then from the customer support to the developers changing things uh, happens uh, um, in a very short period of time. Um, and yeah. In short, uh, things will um, sometimes not not work, uh, and that's for every single project. The thing is that we have to be prepared for to fix things as soon as possible and beforehand, before right. before we launch. And then when we launch, if things happen, uh, then we we're able to uh, to fix things uh, as quickly as possible. So from the other side, it's not uh, annoying, and you waiting and waiting, and nothing happens. Uh, we want to be open also and and communicate. Uh, things and, and and fix them as soon as uh, as fast as we can makes sense so hey okay something pretty pretty fired up um would, have you watched the africa special yeah i did yeah. okay all right sweet yeah. so what was your favorite thing about it i mean that was uh there was a lot uh but what yeah. what to you really sticks out from that yeah, there's a lot. I think, like for for everybody that is uh, watching, I guess the first thing that is that uh, the the um, uh, that uh, deal with the Ethiopian um, uh, the, the Ethiopian lead, you know, with the Ethiopian government for for education. I think that's what the things that one of the things that stands uh, out. Um, and and overall, I think what's really interesting is to see that uh, Cardano keeps the the um, focus uh, on on. Tackling the the problems of uh, of Africa, which uh, also can be uh, replicated in uh, other sides of the uh, the world, which is uh, great. Um, so the other day I was talking to um, someone from uh, um, uh, from a project called uh, Aldea that you can find in in uh, it, it is kind of um, also a, an organization to um, uh, that is tackling um, this kind of the same problems, but in Latin America. And then you see also a parallel also uh, uh with uh, the the teams that are have been formed in in Africa um so this uh i think the the special of yesterday i think was really inspiring to see also some some stake pool operators from different countries in in Africa um uh, the the guys of uh, WADA uh, mm. as well uh, I, i've talked to them uh, and it's also really interesting what what they are doing in in also in educating uh, and in uh, uh, not just educating about uh, uh, blockchain in general, but also technical uh, education uh, for future Plutus and developers as well. Um, so I think yeah, overall it was a very interesting. Apart from uh, from that that deal of uh, for five million uh, sure. um, users, which is also a great milestone. But apart from that, it's really interesting to see that uh, Cardano is really. Um, uh, doing what they what they said they would do, and it's not just a thing saying that we're going for the uh, for we uh, tackle the the problems in in Africa. Um, and they're actually doing, and then it's great to hear not only from from them but from members of the community in Africa that what are, what they are are doing using Cardano's uh, technology. Yeah, completely agree. I, I, that that Ethiopian deal. I mean. I was I was curious if it was going to even happen. Um, you know, obviously I believed it would, and I believe in the in the company and the work that they're doing. But to be able to close a deal with an Ethiopian government while they have, I mean, there there's there's a mess going on over there yeah. right now internally, and uh, to have pulled this off in the midst of that and everything else that's going on with you know just getting smart ca contracts a platform etc it's it's just amazing uh, and i think it's it's understated how huge this is for the industry that we have 5 million users coming on to the blockchain to prove a a real world benefit and real world real world use case of of the blockchain for identity and digital identities and i mean it's tremendous uh, so 
uh, definitely brings a lot of credibility to the industry and very exciting episode for sure. Um, did you, yeah. did you watch the part about world mobile as well? That was pretty yeah. fascinating. Yeah, that was uh, fascinating as well. Yeah. 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 And that's also like what you, I was just thinking, what you, what you just said, it's totally uh, true that it's people um, were complaining after a while that, uh, that that deal didn't come and then it was taking too long. But yeah, we have to also think, take into consideration, like you said, this is a, Ethiopia is a country that is in a, a, in almost a, in, in civil Turmoil, war yeah. uh, and, and, and they got this done. So it, it's um, things take uh, time. Um, but yeah, when they happen, I think yeah, uh, rolling out to 5 million uh, people is already a huge, huge milestone. And yeah, very happy yeah. for that as well. Yeah, yeah I am too. Well, hey, man, it's great to have you on. Uh, I, I, it's, it's good for all the insight that you provided around your uh, decentralized exchange and Cardax. We'll definitely put links to your site and uh, help keep the community involved. We, we love what you're doing. Um, I'm sure you have a busy day ahead and uh, look forward to catching up with you the next time. We'll definitely reach back out to have you on the show again and, and see how things are going. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Joshua, for your time. And, and uh, yeah, I'd love to uh, come back um, once uh, um, things have uh, developed uh, and, and uh, to tell you how, how things are going for, for Cardex and, and the community. Absolutely. We're excited to keep watching, man. Have a great day. Great weekend. Thank you. You too. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.